Oh gosh. You guys, um, so glad everyone is here and joining us. My name is Kayla Haley. Bear with us, guys. This is the first time we've ever put on <laughs> an online conference. And yes, we're showing you how to do it, but we are learning ourselves along the way. So we appreciate your, your patience um, and grace on us. So um, we have a lot to get through in 45 minutes. And so I want us to take as much, you know, make the most of this time. Um, I'm going to let uh, these two gentlemen introduce themselves. Again, my name is Kayla Haley your host for the conference. And this class is how to build a team. And so uh, we're gonna talk about that um, in a panel style discussion for different sized churches. Um, and so I'll let, uh, uh, Pedro, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Uh, hi guys, my name is Pedro Delgado. Uh, my wife and I serve the uh, campus and Marys in a region uh, of Boston, the Spanish region of Boston. Uh, recently, we were asked to uh, help out, help oversee uh, the media for both regions of Boston, and it has definitely been a, a learning, learning experience. Awesome, awesome. And Tuan, can you introduce yourself? What's up, family? Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you're tuning in from. Uh, this is Tawan. I'm down in the Broward Church. I work with um, the creative team down here. I'm the creative director. Um, I've been doing this now for about a year or so strong um, with a little bit prior experience beforehand. Um, but I'm just here the best I possibly can um, with any other churches out there. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for being here, um, especially on such short notice. So let's just dive right in. So. Um, you guys, kind of the, the, the thesis and the reason why this class was designed um, and we, we created this was because so many uh, churches have asked, okay, well, we need to do live streaming or we need to do this or we need to do that. And, um, and really before you can really dive right in to implementing anything, um, one, you need to make sure that you have a clear vision. And that's what the first session was about with Tony and Will making sure you have a clear vision on and making sure everyone is, is on the same page. Um, the next session that I really wanted us to talk about was, okay, great. Well, what's your infrastructure look like? Um, great. You, you might even have the money to do um, X, Y, and Z, but if you don't have a team to implement that and for it to be sustainable, then it's not going to work out. And so that's really what the, the thesis of this class is specifically for. And I'm so glad to have Tuan and, uh, Pedro here to, to help talk this out with us. So let's dive right in. So Tuan, if you can um, start us off, just give us a brief history of the Broward Church, um, what the genesis was behind your guys' team, um, at what point you kind of jumped in, and just give us a little highlight reel, uh, origin story, if you will, of the Broward Church's media teams. Okay, I'll try to be brief. Um, we, uh, I started working with the youth ministry in about 2013, um, with the focus on youth, but I was taking care of a lot of the graphic design needs in the church as well. So I like to describe it as kind of like 80% youth, 20% um, design. Um, but during that time we had a presence on Facebook, Twitter, and, um, we had a website. Um, but as the years went by, we started to want to invest more and more and more into it. Um, and at the time, um, Marcus and Amy Overstreet, they're now in Orlando. Uh, they had big dreams for it. Um, but it wasn't until about 2017 uh, when Tony stepped up as the evangelist, where we really started going hard and really hitting the ground running. Um, and really starting to invest a lot more time and resources into all of our um, social media and, and, and the different media even um, here in the present, like in the church building. Um, so we've been, since about 2017, we started um, our Instagram around that time. Um, we started really pushing for our YouTube and trying to uh, work in live stream, which a few months later, we were able to get started. And we've just been going ever since. That's great. Um, Twan, I'm seeing a couple of things in the chat here. If you can, your mic might be a little low. Um, so we just want to make sure it's, people can hear you. Um, 
Okay, cool. Uh, Pedro, uh, same question. Can you share a little bit of a history um, of Brow uh, sorry, Boston's media teams? Obviously, you guys are a, a large church. Just kind of give us the context of your church, uh, your ministry specifically, and, and how that team has been built and how you're currently building it. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the way that it's broken up in Boston is there's, there's a team that oversees all of Boston's social media or all, all of Boston's media, and they really help us out. I, I right now am currently helping oversee just our region. Now, the main uh, team that's, that's uh, overseeing all of Boston, it's made up of our creative director, which is Alberto Machuca, and then Nick Petrie is the social media manager. We have Murby Babalo as the BCC team coordinator, and Jenny Shidi as a strategy creator. And they really help each region now, just make, make, making sure that we stay unified and then giving us materials at different times. Uh, our our group, I really took our uh, region's uh, oversight, really, it's been about a month maybe, uh, so I'm fairly new to it. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we've just we've been learning on the go and, and uh, it's been it's been it's been a, a growing process. Okay, awesome. Um, so let's get really practical uh, now that we've kind of got some context. So um, I would love for you guys to talk again specifically from Tuan, kind of like a medium-sized church. Um, and you, you can even speak for the smaller churches because you guys have grown over the years um, and your team has grown over the years. But um, and then Pedro from a larger church perspective. Um, I'd love to learn uh, about the roles that you guys have on your teams. So um, obviously, okay, maybe I shouldn't say obviously, I apologize. Um, it might not be obvious that uh, when we say media team, that's pretty, that's a pretty broad term, right? Yeah. And so even within that media team, there might even be sub teams uh, within that larger team. And so uh, Tuan, I'll start with you. If you can break down what those teams and what that overall team looks like and how you guys structure yourselves um, from a roles standpoint in Broward. Cool. Uh, yeah, here in Broward, we have a, um, a pretty good team, a pretty huge, incredible team. Um, Tony Fernandez, who's our evangelist, I would say that he's a huge part of the team. He's a huge part of um, just the driving force. I would say Tony's like, um, the visionary. He's the one that sort of keeps us on track. He's the one that, that is driving the vision. And, you know, everyone else on the team is kind of there to make sure that those things are carried out, uh, mainly visually and, and audio based. Um, we also have a sister by the name of Noel, who has um, Noel Rose. She's risen to um, really be a, a, a huge lead for the social media content and development. I would consider her a specialist in it, even though she is self-taught and self-trained. Um, but she's take, she takes care of all of our Instagram and Facebook graphics and a lot of things going out that way um, with the help of me as well. Um, we also have Iman, who is our videographer, and she's all things video. Um, Iman um, also, from time to time, she gets help from a couple of the brothers that we have in the fellowship um, that volunteer as well. But she's the main one that takes care of a lot of videos that you see online. The Broward have, you know, like you sub categories or, or people that are on the team. Um, Shane Peterson helps a lot with the video. Um, Daniel Stearns, before he moved out um, to ATL, he was a huge support and help on a lot of the videos. Um, and we also have uh, Wismar, who is basically our live stream producer. Um, he's the one that takes us online Sunday mornings and trains um, a couple of teams, teams of individuals to operate all that's going on Sunday. Uh, via live stream and and me I just kind of take take care of like the overall brand um, so I kind of have my hands in a little bit of everything I don't know everything which is why we have these people um, doing their jobs um, but I do a lot of um, just making sure that the whole flavor of the Broward Church is prominent um, and that could be through flyers that can be through invites that can be um, through signage I do a lot of the things in the building what it looks like once you explain once you get to the, the Broward Church building and also a lot of the things uh, that you see going out online. So I'm more of the guy that just takes care of the overall look and feel for what people are left with when they hear Broward Church. Great. Um, and then I see a couple questions and we'll, we'll answer those actually along the way and afterwards as well. 
Um, so Pedro, can you uh, share a little bit about how Boston's um, structure and media team looks like? Yeah, so so as explained earlier, we do have a media team that has oversight over uh, really all the regions. But then within each region of the church, we have different media teams themselves that just focus on those services uh, as well. So for instance, our our team in our region, um, there's it's a group, it's a team of five, and uh, we have an editor that really focuses on the professional look of it and and the grammar part of everything that we're posting. Uh, we have a designer who's an 18 year old uh, freshman uh, from from our campus ministry who's actually studying this out in school. So uh, he he's learning as he goes as well, and and it's been a great um, asset to us. And then we have a social media manager um, who's uh, also a 20 21 year old who's graduating, a bright 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 young man. All of these people are doing it on a volunteer basis. And then we have two people that focus just on streaming. So it, it is, uh, we have uh, groups within groups there. Um, like I said, we have one group that oversees all of Boston, making sure that we have a unified voice, that, that, that we're all moving in one unit. But then we have, we're broken up because the church is much bigger into different uh, regions that focus on different areas uh, it, uh, you know, in, the, in the vicinity uh, to just meet the needs of that community. Yep. Okay. Now, so within that team, right, because a big question everyone wants to know is, okay, well, who on that team, is anyone paid? Is this all a volunteer team? Um, so again, share from the perspective of like your, you know, what you've got going on in Broward, Tuan, and, and in Boston as well. So you guys have teams, but share like more of the, the details. Pull back the curtain and show us your guts in terms of like how it works, actually. Um, who's paid? Who's who's a volunteer? You know, are they partially? Uh, are they are they hired fractionally? Are they hired? You know, part time? What's the? Give us the whole picture. Right. So um, the people I just previously mentioned are sort of like the overarching kind of leaders of it all. But there's a lot of volunteers that work for us, um, each individually on their separate teams, and I'll probably get a little bit more into that later. But um, all of the people that I just mentioned, but Wismar, who runs our live stream, is paid on staff. Um, they're not necessarily primarily media, but they're in one form of uh, ministry position um, other than that. Um, for example, actually, is our um, women's campus minister, and she works with the social media. And also, you'll see her on stage doing worship. So she's really like all over the place. But she she's paid she's paid here on staff. Iman is our video intern, um, and she supports the campus ministry as well um, with whatever time she has available. She takes care of that. Um, I am primarily right now, as of late 2018, early 2019, focused on all of the media, and I just help support the youth ministry here in Broward. But the three of us in one form way or another are, are paid to do so. And then, you know, beneath us, or sorry, people that work with us are usually just volunteers throughout the church. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of people that do that. I can go more into detail on that too, if you like. And just, um, but for the most part, those are the main people that, that are paid on staff to do this. So break it, break it down even further to one. Cause I know the context of how you guys operate but people want to people want to know the details. So when you say that they're on staff, like, okay, cool, they get a they get paid by the church, but like, what percentage of their responsibilities um, is like traditional ministry versus media ministry? And maybe it's different per person, so can you, you can break it down. Break it up. Okay, so my question can you is that question you were breaking up. Yep, I'll repeat it. So my question is with those who are paid by the church to do media, basically, let's just call it media ministry, um, they have other roles in traditional ministry as well. Can you share with us a little bit about how those, how that time or how that, how those resources are broken down? So, okay, you've got Noelle, you know, she's leading the campus ministry, but she's also uh, doing the social media for the churches. She's responsible for that. And she's being paid to do that by the church. So, like, what's the breakdown of her, you know, um, time in terms of 
doing, you know, campus ministry versus media ministry, just so people can have a model and a clear understanding of, okay, like there, you know, she's getting paid by the church to do media. Like what percentage of her like compensation by the church is for media versus campus ministry. And I know it's fluid. I'm just probably putting it into. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to kind of throw that out there. If I were to say like help, um, I would say she focuses maybe like 70% on campus ministry and 30 on media. Okay. And for Iman, I would say she's primarily video. And then what time she has remaining, she can she can help out and support the campus ministry. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, and the reason I'm asking that is because you know there are going to be a lot of churches out there, especially with uh, with churches being quarantined right now. I've actually had a couple churches come out, you know, um, and say, "Hey, well, we have this this core this this staff that we're paying right now, but they're not able to do traditional ministry." you know, tasks. And so how can we leverage this resource that we already have and, and, and transition them into a media team, basically? And so right. so there's there's that one situation, but also even after, you know, we're done with coronavirus and everything, churches are trying to figure out what type of resources they should be allocating for a media team. Right. So I'm just trying to give them those real, you know, a real look behind the curtain to say, OK, great. You know, this is not how you need to do it exactly, but this is how we're doing it. And this is just context. Right. And I think um, Noel and I probably would be a good gauge of that because I started working with the youth ministry, as I was saying. And as we started to invest more and more in the media, I started doing less and less with uh, youth and family. And then we just hired someone to take care of youth and family. So Noelle, on the other hand, I feel like when she started working with the media and helping us out, um, she was a huge support, but her main task was campus ministry. And as time has gone on, it sort of evolved and, and morphed a little bit to where she's spending a little less time with campus, raising up a lot of the leaders that she has there um, to support and do a lot of the tasks that she was taking care of so that she can focus a little bit more on the media as well because here in briar we're, we're really big on investing in that because we feel like it's extremely important yeah that's great uh is pedro still there i am still here it seems like my camera just went out right can you hear me i can hear you okay okay um so i'll ask you the same question um pedro is you know what are the who's on that team and then we asked that question but also who on that team is is compensated by the church versus a, a volunteer? And again, just I, we don't want generalities. We want like specifics <laughs> of like, OK, great. This person does X, Y and Z and their time is allocated in this way um, for ministry, for traditional ministry versus uh, specifically for media. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it would be it would be very hard for me to actually give the like a specific percentages, but but I can say this. So for instance, for our oversight team, Alberto Machuca, he's the creative director for all of Boston. He's a region leader as well. So he, he has his own region that that he oversees. Uh, Nick Petrie, who's our social media manager, again overseeing all of Boston, uh, he uh, is a campus minister. Um, you know, overseeing other other ministries as well. Uh, you know, Murby is campus ministry. So everyone has multiple roles that they take on um, as, you know, as well as the, the media part that they that they undertake as well. Um, it would be ideal to have somebody that would be so solely devoted to that right now. That's just uh, not where we're at or not not possible. Now, for for my personal team in my region, I would be the only one that's on staff. And, and I also oversee our campus ministry in about a little under half the marrieds in our region. Uh, so, you know, it's we everyone else that's in our group is is uh, um, is a volunteer basis. And all of them, we we uh, we try to train, you know, on the on the fly. Uh, I personally do not have any background in any of this. Uh, so I kind of had to learn myself. And, and as we went, I, you know, started uh, teaching the people that I'm that I'm bringing up 
Um, but that's kind of our, our, our makeup, at least. And it's, it's the same for most regions. It'll likely be somebody who's on staff, who's minister, ministering to other, uh, has other ministry duties, who also has been giving oversight of their region's media team. And then they look for volunteers to help train, to, to bring up, to, uh, to help out uh, in that way. Awesome. And the reason I ask is because I think people just see the end product, right? And Tony has a great saying in his office, uh, when you see someone's, uh, Tony, I'm sure you're going to tell me what it is in the chat. Oh, Tawan, you, I'm sure you know what it is. When you see someone's progress, don't underestimate their process or something like that. And I think what a lot of times, you know, especially in this world where everything is so public and visual in terms of like live streams and all of those kinds of things, you know, people are seeing, you know, what, what, what Broward is producing or, or other churches or whatever. And I just want people to understand, um, you know, the context of what it built, what it, what it took to build a team. It took years um, as well as you guys had a background in what you were doing. So uh, Tuan is a, is a, is a designer um, Iman does video production. Um, and so having that context to understand that every church is different, um, small, medium, large, and even for a church of Broward size, their context is different because they just had that talent um, pool within their church to begin with. So I don't want anybody to come away from this feeling like, oh, wow, well, you know, we aren't able to produce that same thing in our church. Therefore, it's not worth pursuing or something like that. So Tuan, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit more about some of the early days to kind of give context for some, maybe some of the smaller churches um, to understand, okay, what did this team look like even just as volunteers? And then we're going to start to transition into uh, responsibilities of that team as well. Okay. Um, I would say, uh, I'm going to start with around 20, 20 late, tw about 2018, when we really started going for it. Um, a a one-man show when it came to the visuals in the church. I took care of everything. Um, I took care of everything that was outward focused, the YouTube, the, the website, with the help of um, of, um, of Robert Belofre. Um I took care of it all which is why that year um, we adjusted things because we found out it was a bigger beast than we thought it was for a lot of the dreams and things that, that we wanted to really pursue. So at the time it was just me and the team grew by needs. And with every need, we just prayed. And you know, the fortunate thing or the, or the beauty here in Broward is that we have a lot of people that have those natural gifts and talents that that either did it for a living or do it for a living or or were studying it in school like a lot of our students now i guess in this day and age are studying out media media to begin with so little by little more and more people are coming you know just dropping into our hands just with no experience just kind of waiting for a way to get in and to find out more about their craft and we just do the best we can to use them as a resource to to take broward church to the next level that's awesome. So what was the core? So let's make it even more practical than that. Um, what was the core first role? So obviously you helped with design. So basically you were a designer, a one man band, um, and you're pretty much a designer for the church, right? Right. Um, what would your recommendation be uh, for a small church um, that, you know, I just saw in the comments there's a, in, in Burlington, Vermont, there's a church of 50. Um, and so churches in that small category, what would be the ideal team? Um, and let's just assume they're volunteers. So what would be the one, two or three positions that that church would need to help implement, um, a media strategy? Okay. I'll do my best to answer this and sort of how we did it. So Tony and I, along with a brother um, named Andrew Fuentes, we sat down and we came up with with who, who is Broward. So at the time we were revamping everything. We, we came up with the vision, we came up with the goals, 
We came up with who we are and what we have to offer. Um, and how are we going to connect and use the So it's me, myself, and Andrew, and we came up with all of the content in terms of text for what we wanted to represent and go after. Then I took that and I did it visually. And the way that we started is we focused primarily on getting the website off the ground. So the website had a couple of cobwebs. We, cobwebs, we cleaned that up, got it spiffy. We changed our whole brand to the Broward Church around that time. And we went from there to once we got that a little polished and, and looking great, we started focusing a lot of our resources towards Instagram and Facebook at the time. We still had a Twitter, but Twitter was kind of like, we just, we just wanted to have that logo in our cards. So we had a Twitter, we did have it, but a lot of things from Facebook would just push primarily to Twitter. So it was like a second Facebook account, but we knew we needed to focus on Instagram and Facebook because at the time, those were the leading social media venues. Um, and what we tried to do aggressively towards the beginning is just find a way to be consistent. It was all about being consistent at first. It was let's look good and let's be consistent. So how can we be consistent with what we have? So a lot of the Instagram and Facebook posts were not very well thought through at the time. A lot of it was just constant pictures. And then as time went on, we started to throw in a bunch of other content and things that kind of developed. But we were just trying to get used to operating and keeping a camera on Sunday so that we could have something to submit and upload on Monday. After we got the Instagram and Facebook off the ground, we really started to get on our YouTube channel. And at the time, um, we, we weren't live streaming. To start, we were just kind of uploading the Sunday sermons because we saw that the world was going in a direction that everything was going to be video. So we went from that and it sort of morphed to what it is today anyone at least someone who's visual and have someone who's good with coming up with content ideas and have someone who's good at sort of text that's great so right, it sounds one of my weaknesses grammar so we have someone that i run everything through um noel actually is really good at that who i run everything through when it comes to any kind of text i i run it through her and or um, one of the elders' wives in the church, Pat Brush. She's also a huge support when it comes to that. And Briar, we're, we're like a team, so it's really hard to kind of say, hey, this person does this one task, because really we just try to make sure everything gets done, and whoever has that gift or talent, we pull them in to support someone to, to finish their task or role. So to summarize, it sounds like you have a designer, someone who's in charge of all of the graphic design work, um, you have a copywriter slash social media manager, someone who's in charge of writing text out, whether it be for the website or for social media or even for emails. Um, and they make sure everything is grammatically correct and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then it sounds like you also have eventually when you started to get to this point, a videographer. Someone who is in charge of creating video content posting it on the different platforms. Is that right? right? Right. And at the time, we were only focused on uploading the sermons because it was just about being consistent. And with that team of like three that we started with, it was hard enough as is to just do that, to upload to Instagram weekly or daily, sorry, to upload to Facebook daily and to make sure we up, update our website and YouTube page. That was hard enough. But as time went on, those different openings kind of opened up and we just found people to fill those those exactly. things and we just found ways to kind of work as a, as a team to accomplish that and you know once we started investing in it in Broward I think a lot of people were won over uh with the vision because they saw that we were investing in it they wanted to be a part of it and we didn't even have to do very much recruiting like once people saw that this was the direction we wanted to go in uh, we had you know the churches from you know, the elders in the elders in the church to the younger in the church um, that really just bought in and were a big, huge hand or help uh, to really make sure that, you know, we look we looked our best. Still there. 
I think you're back. I'm okay. Still here. Okay, great. Um, and so, uh, um, Pedro, if you can kind of share a little bit more just about um, even the responsibilities of the people on your team briefly, uh, maybe, yeah, a little bit briefly, and then we're going to get into workflows and then we're going to get into Q&A. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, we have some very similar. Um, I think our we started off really with what, what it is our focus, like what we want our focus to be and what the result is. So we, we, we really realized that our need is to try to reach out to the, young, the younger generation. You know, we have, uh, especially in our region, uh, which is what I'm talking about, the fo our, our focus. We have a lot of people, very mature disciples, but we're losing, we've lost a lot of that younger generation. And so the focus of our social media, everything, the content, it has a lot to do with that, especially on Instagram and, and even recently we started a TikTok um, to try to get to try to get those out there. And so a lot of the people, the, the team shared a little bit of, of what they do or what they are, but we have somebody very similarly who focuses on editing, uh, focuses on making sure everything looks professional. Somebody who who um, who creates the content is a designer and then our social media manager. And th these are all people that have not been trained. They're just they have their specific role that they focus on. And and uh, as uh, Tuan said, we we prefer to have something that's consistent rather than something that's like we, we kind of saturate uh, the, the platforms and then kind of slow down after a while. We'd rather have something good that's consistent um, rather than just just you know flooding every flooding the gates and then stopping after a week or two so that's right that's right so let's transition into workflow so it's one with your team um talk us through a week worth of content that you guys might produce um and talk us through again now kind of use this as a case study of okay these are the people on the team this is their role this is their responsibility and this is what we expect um as a result of their work um, as a part of your guys' overall workflow as a team. Um, so I'd love to hear even just like, you know, um, every Sunday we have our lessons and, be, you know, from that, you know, just take us through your week's worth of content that you guys will end up publishing online and tell us how much time you spend on, on kind of like each of those tasks along the way uh, to produce that content. And also share with us the tools that you're using to collaborate as a team. That's a lot. Yeah, it if is I a miss lot. Anything, if I miss <laughs> anything, just let me know. Feel free. I'm an open book. Um, so uh, Sunday mornings, the live stream team gets here at 8 o'clock with the worship team for practice. They're here because during the 9 a.m. service, it's like a practice run. So they do everything that they're going to do for the 1115 service, which is live, at 9 a.m. Because a lot of those people are being trained by with Mark Leland as well. So he has about two teams of about five or six camera operators and they're just different volunteers in the church. They come in at nine to make sure that they support and get some practice so that 1115, we can take away as many other hiccups as possible because it's live. Once during the service, either myself or Noel or another sister by the name of Carla who, who helps volunteers, who's gotten better than both of us at it, she had no training. She just picked up a camera and said, I want to go for it. She takes, we all, we all are taking photos and pictures during the service. Um, during that time, Iman is helping with the live stream. She's the one that is doing like the moving camera. Um, after the service is complete, we're snapping more photos of just different content we can use throughout the week. Then I pass that on to Noel and Noel takes the pictures. She edits them so that they can be ready and available with the same look we're going for, the same uh, different filters or, or um, just colors that she wants to go with when it comes to the photography on the church website. She edits all of those throughout the week in her free time. And then Iman takes the video and she uploads just the, um, the sermon portion of it to YouTube. And from YouTube, I go in and I make sure everything is the way it needs to be in terms of, you know, the, the titles and whether they're put into playlists and all of that good stuff. And I take those links and then I put them onto the church website. And the church website is where I just take care of everything because that, that's the main place that we're pushing a lot of people because that, that's where all of the content for Broward is located. It's connected to everything that we put out there. Tuesday mornings, we have 
um, a staff meeting for um, just the Sunday operating procedure. Like what, what, what's Sunday going to look like visually? And Tony leads that. And um, Iman is there and also Jason as well. He, he's the leader of our uh, music ministry. Um, and we just sit to, to just basically where the present or the physical overlaps with the digital. We talk a lot about those things. Um, Wednesday, not as much going on because throughout the week, Iman's taking care of a lot of the editing. On Wednesday, she does what we call, we do like a, um, an announcement video. And what that is, is it's like announcements, except, you know, I guess it's not from stage. And we have a lot of reasons why we do that. Um, but that's something new that we started. She, she films that sometime Wednesday. She cuts that up and gets it ready for the following Sunday. Um, she also takes care of all of the interviews that we're doing kind of throughout the week because we try to have ongoing interviews that we post and upload online. And then she takes care of the million and one other videos that might come up because there's always something else. Like I, I can't name them all off the top of my head, but there's always something else that she has to do. So she's kept pretty busy. And Noelle just takes all of the video and the content and she makes it look pretty online and, and uploads that to Instagram. And what we have right now is I help manage the Facebook, but a lot of the content that Noelle puts up on Instagram is pushed directly to Facebook. So it looks exactly the same, but there are some things on Facebook that aren't featured on Instagram. And, and, um, and that's because um, of, of just the look and feel of what we're going for, the demographic and the audience that we have on Instagram. Um, during that time, I'm also pushing a lot of the things back to the website, right? So um, that's a, that's Wednesday, Thursday, and the well is doing that every day of the week. I would say Friday, um, Iman does also just trying to get a lot of B-roll and content that we can use ongoing. She tries to kind of always have her camera on hand and I do so as well. So Saturday is more like a prep day where we kind of talk, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped Thursday. So Thursday, we actually have a second meeting and that's with Tony as well. And that is more like, that's, that is, that is, that is all online. And, and that, and that has kind of developed because we really didn't know what we were doing to begin with. Um, but we started just trying to figure out, you know, how do we focus on reaching our community with the platforms that we're utilizing? So even when it comes to, we talk about subscribers, we talk about followers. And a lot of the focus is because we all throughout our goal and dream is to saturate Broward. Our goal, dream, and vision is to make um, Broward Church Broward's church. Um, and we go after that um, by talking through that on that Thursday. And then we all sit down and talk about the individual tasks that needs to be ta taken and carried out. We start with the main person who has to take care of it. So if it's social media related, it'll be Noel. Um, but if there's something that Noel may not be able to get around to, then obviously I can pick it up or Iman can pick it up if she has the tools and resources to do so. We just try to work as a team to make sure that whatever it is that we're trying to get done gets done one way or another. And if we have a little bit of the gift of talent, we use you to do so. so and or so. communicate that to the different volunteers to make sure that those tasks are carried out. So really quickly, we have uh, five minutes left in this session. So tools. So you talked a lot about picking things up and things like that, but like practically speaking, what does that actually mean? Are you using Google Drive? Are you using Slack? Are you using Asana? Like what tools? And we'll and, and I see your guys' uh, comments here in the chat. Don't worry, I see you. Um, we are going to document, we have all this documented and we're gonna send this all out to you guys afterwards as well. Um, but tools like uh, linking, okay, great. Like let's say Noel um, Iman is creating video content for um, for whatever content you guys are going to put out, and maybe she's chopping it up into smaller pieces. How is that getting? How is that video file getting to Noel and to you? All those smaller steps. Okay, so if there's anything. I use I use Adobe products, so I use Photoshop, Illustrator, 
that that's my thing. I use that. Believe it or not, Noelle actually does a lot of her beautiful artwork and designs through a number of different apps. And from time to time, she might use one of the Adobe platforms, but she takes care of a lot of those things through apps like um, Over, um, Canva. Um, those are just some of the main ones that I feel like she kind of uses um, throughout the week to try to make it look pretty. And she just finds a way to keep it consistent um, by just not destroying the integrity of the design that was already created. And what she does, she has an eye, which is what, you know, I feel like a lot of people, I don't know if you necessarily can be trained at that, but she, she has a really good eye for design to begin with. So she does a lot of her, her work with apps. Iman uses Premiere Pro. She takes care of a lot of it on Premiere I'm learning Premiere Pro. I'm decent at it, but I'm not Iman, who studied it and, and, and knows a lot more about it. But there are some things that I can I can carry out with just iMovie. There have been times where I've used iMovie. If it's just a simple edit and we're not trying to go for anything fancy, um, iMovie is a free program that comes with you know all Apple products, even if it comes to over your phone. It just takes someone who's willing to sit down and play with it um, for a little while. But a lot of the communication is done. Our staff has a Slack account. Tony communicates that in separate groups. We have the digital team Slack group and we have the staff Slack group and a couple of other groups that are um, communicated through the Slack. And what we do to, um, to send files a lot of times after church, we try to give people the hard copy on like an SD card or thumb drive. But if we can't, we just upload it to either, either um, Google Drive or, um, or we transfer. Sometimes we use just somewhere online that's cheap and available to, to send bigger files. But that's usually how we get the file from one person. We try to do our best to give them like, an actual memory card of some sort. So just, I see a couple questions here asking about just the practicality of um, our, you know, obviously there are free resources out there. Um, Canva, um, you know, I saw Trello kind of as a project management tool. Asana is another great free project management tool. Um, but in terms of the paid uh, programs, are you paying for that as an individual or is the church paying for that? Uh, the church pays for that um, that Slack account. Just Slack or any of the but paid programs? The church pays for the Slack account and the Adobe account. The other apps, are, I think, are free. Okay. Okay. So the whole suite of Adobe. So we will, um, you guys, don't worry, don't fret. We have an entire resource list that has uh, been designed and developed both of free resources and of paid resources. Um, obviously, these platforms know that uh, the free version is meant for you to be able to, you know, increase your productivity a little bit. The paid versions typically have a lot more features, um, allows you to have more people to collaborate with, et cetera. So um, we'll kind of put those different features and, um, uh, options in that resource list so that you guys have access. It'll be linked. So you, all you have to do is click the link. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. So guys, we um, have two minutes left. So send me any questions that you might have and let's try to get two minutes of questions in. Um, Brandon, our producer of the show, he made a great point. He said right now due to coronavirus, if you have Adobe Creative Cloud, you can go through the cancellation process and they will offer you the next 60 days for free due to the pandemic. So that's a pretty great resource. <clears throat> Let's see, any questions? Um, I noticed Roger says, I noticed the Broward Church has quite a bit of your sermons on your YouTube channel and looks like high quality videos. Is that also part of your outreach? Oh, for sure. It's all outreach. This is all about, it's all about the Great Commission. Like everyone that we try to get from the vine to, to, to really go after that goal is how do we reach people with the internet tools that we have, you know, accessible. So 
for us, we, we try to use YouTube to give people a taste of what they can experience if they come in person. Um, I think when we first started, our goal was really to saturate Broward. Our goal was really to make sure that we got people, gave people just enough to say, you know, come and, and experience and check out more because our, our secret sauce is fellowship uh, across the, 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 the whole world in terms of the ICOC. So we know that if we can get people through those doors, we'll be able to connect with them and help them further and preferably lead them into some sort of Bible study or a community group or community group or, or some find some kind of way to stay connected with that person so that ultimately we can help them to become a disciple. It is, it is all, it is all about, about that. Um, we even develop um, a thing we call like the discover class, which is another avenue to trying to help people to transition from non church goer to Briar church visitor to Briar. Yep. That's awesome. Um, I did see another question, Sharon, uh, Sharon, you asked, um, did, do you get permission waivers to use photos taken at uh, services? Um, and so, uh, Tuan, what, what do you guys do in Broward? So I think, I think that's something that we've really been trying to work on. A, a lot of our photos that we take, we try, we, we basically tell people, like, they're, they're not all, like, candid, right? A lot of them. After we take the picture, we ask, hey, is it cool if we post X, Y, and Z? We do that because when we first, first started, we, we were just kind of snapping shots. But there were a couple of people that were concerned. So we tried to do our best to ask permission before we upload it to you know, any online avenue. Yeah. And typically, I know most uh, children's ministries, um, when you've, you're signing your kid in uh, for the first time, I know a lot of children's ministries have some kind of parent uh, release form or waiver that um, also includes the um, ability to photograph a child. Um, I also know that a lot of churches, especially in Denver, if someone asks for their uh, photo to not be used, we always make sure to respect that. Um, and then also from a video standpoint, um, as long as you also, like, let's say you might have forgotten a release form to get certain people filmed in a video, um, you can ask them literally on camera, hey, do I have permission to uh, use this footage? And if they give you yes, even in video form, that's something that you can store in a file uh, with your other release forms and that's uh, suitable um, as well. So guys, I am so glad you all came. There's a lot of, um, there's so much more we're gonna be answering. A lot of the questions that you have please take a look at the schedule because a lot of those questions will get answered throughout the rest of the program. Um, and so again, these sessions are recorded. Um, I don't know what happened to Pedro. I think we lost him in Boston, <laughs> but um, these will be available to you guys. Again, those that resource list will be available as well with all relevant links. Um, and uh, if they have any special codes or discounts going on right now, we'll be sure to, sure to make a little note of that as well. Um, so awesome. Um, we'll see you guys in the next session.